inspired by 1980s B-movies, Ninja, You Must Kill takes you on an adventure among killer robots, moving elevators, death, and blood. Hi, I'm Martin. I'm a professional game developer today, but I started out making games as a kid. And today I'm going to embarrass myself by showing you that one of the, one of the games I made as a kid, it was uh, not the first one, but it was pretty early. I think it was made probably in 1985 or something. This game was made for the ZX Spectrum, which was a pretty popular 8-bit computer back in the 80s. It had 48K of RAM, 3.5 MHz uh, Z80 CPU. It didn't have any custom chips for audio or graphics, so it was pretty challenging to make anything look good with it, especially in BASIC, which was the programming language I used for this. I have a Spectrum here. This is the, the 128K model, uh, which came later than the 48K that this game was made for. But I won't be using this today. I will be playing the game in an emulator. And this game, as most other games back then, starts with a short loader written in BASIC that then loads a loading screen. And if you're a, a if you're used to loading uh, games on the ZX Spectrum, you can even hear that this loading noise here is from a loading screen, or that it is a screen dump that is being loaded currently. It's, it has a very characteristic uh, sound. And then when it loads the attributes like this, you can see the image. A uh, pretty ugly image in, in my opinion. It was, we didn't use any kind of uh, drawing tool or anything like that. This is image is generated with code. Unfortunately, that code seems to have been lost. I couldn't find it anywhere. Probably I never even saved it. And I just wrote the code to generate the image and then, and then uh, saved the image to tape and was done with it. But as, as you can see, it's uh, it's supposed to be blood and violence. You have the, the, the title here, Ninja, you must kill. You have the blood flowing down here. You get an axe here and the chopped off head. And the credits. Martin, that's me. Stefan is my brother, who I think made the graphics for this game. And the pair Lange, who is an old friend that is uh, that made the game design and help came up with the, with ideas and wanted it more violent all the time. Probably. So now the game is loaded. Here is the the first screen in the game. It's a bit slow. There's blood flowing. Yeah, that music is, is probably that I, I just wrote down some, some numbers for uh, in, in the program that sounded okay -ish and sounded a bit like music. I didn't know much about music or anything about music. <laughs> Okay, so here are the instructions, and for some reason we made these in Swedish. The whole game is in Swedish. And I think the reason for that is that, why didn't we do it in, in English? I mean, that would be the most natural thing for a game. But I think back then, this was in the 80s, things weren't as global back then as they are today. Uh, I think many companies were pretty happy with having, having a market that was just Sweden, or maybe only the Nordic countries. So these are the instructions in, in Swedish. O, left, P, right, B to space equals fight. 
press any key to start. So O and P moving left to right and I'll hit space to fight. Let's go. Hit any key to start. Oh yeah, I remember this. This is a, a, a bug. This, I'll have to fix the code for this. Okay, now, now I can press any key and start the game. Up here it says uh, left to kill, 05. So I have five of these monsters to kill. I'm the, the uh, white, white person there, which is a bit strange for, for being a ninja. You're supposed to be, be black or at least well, dressed in black. Um, but as the background color is black, that's, then you would be invisible, which would be a good thing for a ninja, of course, but a bad thing for a game where you're supposed to see yourself. Uh, and I move around like this, step by step, and he's... Oh, I killed my first, had my first kill. Uh, and now when the, the, the other... Uh, the other, the, the the kind of murder robot or whatever it is, is near me. I can try to hit it, and he will try to hit me. It kicks me, so I fly away, and I try to fight back by pressing space. I managed to 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 kill kill it that first one. So three left to kill. Uh, the first one was killed by falling down this elevator shaft here. The purple thing is the elevator, and if you if you walk down here, you will die. Uh, so I have to wait for the elevator. And for technical reasons, you're jumping when you're standing on the elevator, and you have to get off, otherwise you hit the the ceiling, which has red some kind of red spikes that kill you as well. So let's go down and see if I can fight this murder machine. Oh, it, it kicked me and I flew away and died. Death music. Press a key for a new game. Okay, sure. If you look at how, how the enemy moves, the AI, so-called AI, is, uh, is not very advanced. It just tries to follow you horizontally, normally. Now it tries to take the elevator and falls down the shaft and dies. That's a good thing. Let's see I can, if I can hit it. I have to... F oh, it got stuck in that, uh, that piece of floor that appears and disappears. And as you can see, it just follows me horizontally normally. Uh, sometimes when it's at, at the lowest level, it tries to take the elevator instead. I, mean, I don't quite know when it does that. I'm <laughs> sure there is some logic. I'm looking forward to seeing the code for that. Uh, I suppose it is a bug that it doesn't always do that. But now it does. You can see it walk to the right in a very strange jerky motion. Well, we killed another one. Uh, three left to kill. Let's see if I can try to hit this. I'm not really sure when I hit it. I think it's a matter of timing, pressing space at the correct time. As you can see, the, there isn't much of animations or smooth moving graphics or anything like that. Everything is constrained to 8 by 8 pixel tiles. The, uh, the, the spec didn't have any graphics mode that used characters like many other computers back then. But uh, the basic was very much designed about around characters. So you, this whole screen is a sort of a grid of um, 32 by 24 characters. And all the graphics are in those 
in, in that tile grid. Yeah, I got it. I'm the one left to kill. Let's see if I can trick it. No, it's falling down into the elevator together with me. Oh, now I'm dying. I'm dead. But I won. <laughs> but I won. Because that was the last one. And then there is a bug. I have to fix this. Uh, try to allocate memory for, for the adventure game that was supposed to follow this. So after you completed this, uh, this part of the game, it will tell you to start the tape again and load the next part, which would be a text adventure game. Uh, by the way, this whole idea of an action game followed by a text adventure game is something that we took from Eureka, where you played sort of an action game in a labyrinth followed by a text adventure game. And we wanted to do the same thing, and we started making the text adventure that was never finished, and that might be just as well. Um, but I haven't even been able to recover that from the tape. So the action part is all that's left. And also this uh, loading screen. Anyway, next step for me is to have a look at the code for this, because I'm curious of what it's like to be a newbie programmer. And maybe looking at that code and see what mistakes I made and the way I was thinking when I programmed back then, that can help me remember what it's like to be a total noob. Mm -hmm.